Hi, I'm Larry Watson, the author of the novel, Let Him Go. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 92nd Street Wise Talk with the film's writer, director, producer, Thomas Bazooka. The movie stars Kevin Costner and Diane Lane as a couple rescuing their grandson from a dangerous family living off the grid. For those of you watching who weren't able to attend the screening, we'll have a few spoilers in this conversation, but also seek the film out when it's released on November 6th. And now here's the trailer to let him go. And when we return, I'll be joined by Thomas Bazooka. Don't start what you can't finish. You're going with me or without me? I saw exactly what I've always felt about Donnie Wee Boy. And I saw that girl can't protect her child. Margaret Jimmy's her boy. He's your grandson. We're trying to locate a Donnie Wee Boy. He married our son's widow. Got our grandson with him. You let it be known you're looking for a wee boy. I'll find you. We thought we'd see Jimmy since we're in the neighborhood. Since you're in the neighborhood. Go careful. Where in the hell are we? We came to see our grandson. My boy doesn't have to answer to you. And we don't have to answer to you. Whoa. <laughs> Come with us. No. He'd kill me. Him and his mother. Your grandson. He's a wee boy now. You're with me on this, right? Right behind you. He hit Lorna. You hit your wife. Like. Don't start what you can't finish. I think we're here. Hey, <laughs> Larry. I, 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 I can't get used to not being in places. I know. I keep I, talking I about it as, yeah. It's good I to know, see you here. I know. I know. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad we both got the same memo in terms of what to wear. You look great. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's, can we, let's just start with a biggie. It's the question that's, that's posed at the... Yeah. Um, 92nd Street Y website announcing the event. Um, no. Why do you think this film resonates in 2020? Um, I don't know. Uh, well, there's some a little bit of tribalism uh, is is always uh, you know the the drumbeat of that. But I think you know what I I think about what was what grabbed me about it in 2013 is that when it was published um it that it was just it's such a simple story it's it was it it was its concerns were biblical to me it was a, a small story about a family but sort of had large themes that uh really resonated for me and i'm sure they it's also i think everybody's in at home now right so it's, it really becomes a thing like if you like family really when everything else goes away it's your it's all about your family yeah 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 so here's yeah. one then that's sort of related we had a conversation early on yeah and i had 
I had just listened to uh, an interview with an interview with Francis Ford Francis Ford Coppola on Fresh Air, hmm. and he said that every time he makes a film, he had a theme in mind, and he usually tried to reduce that to a, a single word, and that he would use that huh. to help him make decisions. Some decisions would be taken care of. He, you know, he, he knew whether a character was riding a bicycle or a car, but. Yeah. If he wasn't sure, maybe he would refer to this word. So he said, for example, when he was making the conversation, the, oh. the word was, was privacy. Mm. And Gene Hackman's character had to wear a trench coat. He wasn't sure what it should be. So he had a, a, a transparent raincoat. Works mm -hmm. with privacy. Mm -hmm. And I, I was going to ask you if you did something like that, but I think maybe you thought I was quizzing you <laughs> And and you said oh, immediately okay. you said oh oh sure that's easy blood oh yeah 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 and the first time I saw a trailer for the movie I didn't come in right away and I yeah. came in just when the word blood was filling the screen it, do you yeah. want to talk about do you want to talk about blood in this movie? Sure. Or? Well, it, it's, you know, what's funny is as you were sort of prefacing the whole thing, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm not as smart as Francis Ford. <laughs> what, what word am I going to come up with? I'm glad I already came up with one. You already did, yeah. Because I was going to say loss. Today, I was going to say loss. But the, but it, it, but the blood thing, it, it gets, for me, it gets back to the, it's the Greek tragedy, biblical aspects of family and this is the blood ties and I didn't come up with the blood thing in the in the marketing campaign that was all focus features and I'm glad they did um, because it's the thing everyone's fighting for is Margaret's fighting for her blood Blanche is fighting for her blood um, you know when they sit down with Blanche for pork chops Blanche starts tells a tale of blood it's you know the and um and I think it, it's interesting. There was a little bit. There's a little, little behind the scenes thing. We added additional dialogue. We recorded Leslie. We added two more words. She gives the speech. Bill leaves the kitchen. She goes to get the pork chops, and she said the line, which is in the book, is, um, "I'm sure you two. Somebody you could." Um, tell a tale of your own, something about hardships, yeah. um, family. And we added, after the movie was shot in post, we added blood and sacrifice um, because it just sort of sharpened the point. Uh, and, and since you mentioned Blanche and Margaret in the same sentence, yeah. very early on, we talked about the the similarity between those two very dissimilar characters. Right. Yeah. It, it, well, they're I always, you know, the two faces of a single coin. And yeah. you know, that they're both sort of but how how aware were you of these things when it's not simply my interp or it's my interpretation, but it was there in your book. I guess so. Right. I don't remember very See? well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens, right? It does happen. It happens yeah. to me anyway. Yeah. I, I've yeah. said many times, I can keep it in my head while I'm writing it, but when I'm finished, yeah. it, it, it goes away. So yeah. these, this, this Margaret person you're talking about, that would be... Uh, <laughs> right. Which one is she? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I... And, and certainly uh, blood works with those two characters yeah. Uh, yeah. it's important for Blanche for him to for Jimmy to be a wee boy and it's important for yeah Margaret that he be a a, a black ledge yeah it, it you know it's something that's interesting that it it because it, it didn't it's it's it had not occurred to me until we were on set and it's in the book and it's and it's in the screenplay Blanche says to, when she meets the black ledges for the first time in her kitchen she says you're the lawman and he says yeah and then she turns to mark she's and you're you're the grandma and what signi what was what i didn't realize until we were standing in the kitchen and leslie said it is blanche herself is not a grandma by blood 
And that I think I sort of, it suddenly became clear to me that piece of it, which is she's raised these useless men yeah. who cannot produce. And she want like she and because she's given this whole monologue about legacy and her family and everybody left and she stayed and she now they're fourth generation and this and the the vein is running dry and she needs a grandchild <laughs> like she needs to, it that line to continue and so that's partly why she has to keep Jimmy. And, and speaking of that, I didn't realize either until sort of late in the process, if he, if Jimmy becomes a wee boy, yeah. he, he's the end of the Blackledge line. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So somebody's, yeah, who's going to win? Exactly. Yeah. Who's, whose family's going to continue on? Yeah. Yeah. And then when the sheriff visits them in the hospital room, he mm -hmm. says, He's a, he says in reference to Jimmy, he's a wee boy now. Yeah. And that must be just a needle through the heart for. Right. For you have no idea or, how hard it was. I knew somebody had to say that line yeah, yeah. somewhere in the movie. And I couldn't, that was, it was definitely in the, in the writing of it, but I was so happy when I figured out who could say it because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. 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 And is that when when hmm. when George kicks the kicks the bed? George is... kicks the bed. No, it's it's oh. a it's a final like warning. It's a final warning. Okay. George yeah. kicks the bed when he says something about he's just making light of their sons having his broke his neck in two, and he's just being cavalier about oh, the yeah. death of their yeah. son. Yeah. George has had enough. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was a that was a violent outburst that worked so well. It was, I mean, good. It was just really startling. It, it, it was good. You know what was great was um it, that I'm gonna that was Kevin, and was and you could feel he. Well, it, uh, I also want to give credit to that actor Greg Larson who played the sheriff in that scene, and he did a great job. Um, and like he came in and just had to do some heavy lifting. Yeah. with these two A-list stars. Um, and Kevin really loved that scene. He just kept talking about how ugly that scene was, what it's about and all of that. And Diane's great, but Kevin, you could feel him getting, he's trapped in that bed. Yeah. And so that kick was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you, you mentioned Kevin's character. There's a, uh, in, in one of the trailers, uh, Kevin Costner says, as Kevin Costner in re reference to the movie, uh, he said that that what makes the movie good is that it is honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you what what's your understanding of of that term uh, in 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 this movie or in or in film? Yeah. Um, it, well, it, in. I think it, it's. I think what he means, knowing Kevin, that it it goes where it says it. It, it delivers on its promise. It goes where it says it's going to go, and it it doesn't sort of pull punches. And I, I, I think he's definitely talking about George's fate, mm -hmm. and that um, you know, I love my editor Jeff Ford, who I've worked. This is the third time I've worked with him. Um, was just so great articulating all this stuff that, you know, they, Jimmy, you know, the magic feather is taken down, taken to the underworld and they have to go to retrieve him, but you have to pay, you, you know, you sacrifice one yeah. life for another. And I think that that, I think that's what Kevin means. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, and and which reminds me of something else that you said in an early conversation, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. that George does it for Margaret. Oh, t completely. Don't you think? Don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For the, he and Kevin d talks about that that he this man loves his wife, and yeah, I yeah. did the thing that was which was what was so moving to me about it to begin with, and made me interested in it is his. 
George is, you know, he he doesn't think she's going to get that kid back. He's he's not convinced of the argument. He doesn't. He's knows she won't get the kid, and but that he has to be there when she doesn't get the kid. And but then I think when he sees the circumstances in which Jimmy and Lorna are trapped, you know, it changed. He he says it in the diner. He's like he can't stay there. No. And I think. And I and I think he knows before anybody else does where where it's going to end. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, I, I I and I think he does this, and I think it, there are, uh, are so many little things in the film that that bear this out. He does this knowing that he's not exactly number one for Margaret, not right now. Uh, oh. Um, her. her She's thinking first, I think, of Jimmy. And if he's not, if George isn't going to come along, she's still going to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he says, I'm right behind you. And yes, I, right. Yeah. Uh, either, which is, you know, which is from the book, that, that a, exchange. <laughs> but the, um, uh, she's consumed by her grief. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, yeah. That's, it motivates everything. And, and there's even a little thing in when they're in the car. She's she's made the the cake, the, the coffee mm-hmm. cake, mm-hmm. and and I think he says something like, "Oh, oh, now I get some." He says, "Oh, I do get a piece." He knows it wasn't for him. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I finally get some cake. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, the movie has such a a, a distinctive look. Mm. And um, I thought a, a, a significant part of that look was its 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 darkness. Um, mm. You know, many dark scenes, and they mm-hmm. are they are interior scenes. The saddle shop is dark. Montgomery Ward's oh, yeah. it, where yeah. they are is a little bit dark. Certainly, it's dark right. in the the wee boy kitchen, and mm-hmm. and that these dark places often are also closed in constricted mm-hmm, spaces mm-hmm. that they it, it's difficult to move there and then of course the ultimate is the in the wee boy house toward the end with all those closed doors and corners yeah and, yeah um and on the other hand there are the there they are often in open spaces mm-hmm. with light yeah. and and that's when things are going better for them. yeah um yeah no i you know they're going that? they're going down yeah they're going down the hole um there's you know there's a it, this was just it was a fluke of um like we did you know just choosing the locations they once they leave the saddlery um to go to north dakota they're sort of descending, they pass the sign that says North Dakota and they're descending a hill. And, you know, and then they're on that, they're on that overlook looking down at wherever they're gonna go. And you just feel like the, the underworld is, that's where they're going is this yeah. dark this dark place. And it gets like, I love, it, I, I loved all the sets. I love Bill's house, which was actually a house. The interior is this weird, like we wanted it, it's, it's, claustrophobic all these places they go and i and i liked his place was like all i cared was that it was freshly painted inside which i think is a detail in the book um i wanted to look like he'd murdered somebody and they had just they it's a fresh coat of paint because you don't know what happened um but uh no trevor smith who was our production designer was i was like like have courage um about how dark I wanted to paint the wee boy kitchen. Um, Cause I liked that whole thing where, I'm not sure how I came up with it, but this, the introduction of Blanche mm-hmm. and that she is standing right in front of them but they can't see her until she shows herself. Yeah. And just the control that, you know, it's a stage. She's set a stage and then steps into the light and mm-hmm too late from yeah. yeah yeah it's it's a wonderful shot and and when she comes down into that 
yeah. it's almost as if that's where the ceiling is. I mean, so it feels as yeah, if, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, we did this crazy thing where I can't remember if this is in the book, but it is in the book um, that, that there's um, thunder and. I know this book pretty well, Larry. <laughs> um, that uh, there's at the, at the height of the standoff, it starts to rain, and it, it, when everybody pushes back from the table, you can hear the hiss of rain. Is what's in the book, and we sort of did a variation of that. But the it's also that it, I love that was a set that we built on a soundstage, the kitchen, <clears throat> the interior of the house specifically that kitchen. And that scene is long. The pork chop summit, we always called it. Yeah. And the, the windows iris down, that it becomes darker and darker the longer they're in there. So it's sort of, I, I would sort of talk to Guy Godfrey, our cinematographer about, I, I just wanted, if the windows were eyes, I wanted all the eyes to sort of close, that they're trapped in this place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a wonderful image. Uh, in that scene, there is a shot that is for me sort of emblematic uh, of the movie. And there are so many great, great shots. It's almost, it's almost like a still. And that's of, of Margaret holding Jimmy. I know. And, and she has this look. It's, uh, it, uh, that was the image that haunted me after, after yeah. Yeah. watching it. Yeah. It, it's she, she has the prize in her arms yeah and kevin it's i love both of them in that scene um there's a great thing where she, it's it's a great take of diane and she was really in the moment we had thunder and the kid looks up because the kid can hear the thunder and she doesn't she's so in this moment and i in the in this negotiation with kevin where he's looking at her and like He's saying, "Put the kid down in yeah. every way, yeah. except out loud," yeah. and and they're negotiating with each other about what to do. Yeah, yeah, they're good actors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she can't run. She can't run, but that you can see that that's her impulse. Yeah, yeah. maybe I yeah. can do it. Maybe I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah for uh, sure. And it is a little like an animal. Uh, yeah. Look, yeah. Her, her look. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you 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 mentioned the great actors, and and I, mm -hmm. I want to ask some more about that. But what was it like to work with a little kid? I oh, thought he God. was just brilliant. He, that early yeah. shot where he flinches on the street, it's yeah, so good. It's so good. He he's um it, it, there. We had a couple of twins, yeah. um, Bram and Otto Hornberg, and. You know, the, the key was, I was terrified. I was just the whole thing of, you're working with kids can't really, they understand the difference between pretend and truth mm -hmm. at that age, but not so much. Like they can't, they're not acting. So a lot of what you have to do, and they, they, they had the their wonderful mom, um, was of great help to me because it was sort of like we did a lot of sort of counting okay one two three then you do this thing and but the that scene on the street to give it away like i was terrified i was going to traumatize this kid that would the kid would never have ice cream again in his entire life um what happened was it's it's um it's an in-camera trick we accelerated the film so what the actor Will Britton, who's playing Donnie, does is he reaches and just taps the he touches the boy's face, um, but at a this velocity. But then you ramp up the film, and it looks like he struck the kid, yeah. and that was. But, but then the kid, at a certain point, we had done. There was Bram. We had done enough takes where he'd had it, like he. I don't want this because Will is yelling at Lorna. So the kid was freaked out. And so this like running away from him, that's not acting. He was, um, and I kept like talking to the mom and she was like, he's fine, he's fine. 
<laughs> and we after we did the scene, we sent them to the dinosaur museum there in Drumheller, and and they had a great day, and they ate ice cream okay. and all that. But um, now he got a little. It, I was excited. We got um, no, that was Otto. Bram was the other boy, and Otto didn't like Will after a time, understandably. And then in the house at the end with the with Bill and the tug of war, he'd had enough of, of Jeffrey Donovan too. And yeah. so we put Bram in and Bram was the time of his life. Um, but then it was also, they loved being thrown over the banister yeah. by Kevin. They, they, lo- they didn't want that to stop. They because it was like a ride. Okay, that's yeah. wonderful to hear. Yeah, yeah. But for Susan, that is that's that's her emblematic scene for the, oh, for the yeah. movie when oh. when the child goes over the banister. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's just that's desperation. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and if you They're do fine. this, we'll give you some ice cream. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you spoke earlier a little bit about um, uh, some places that they're, they're going down that hill, for example, when they're entering North Dakota. I know you you really covered a lot of territory when you were, you were scouting um, locations for the movie. Yeah. So how did, how did that work for you? I mean, were you, did you already have the, an idea of what it should be? be and you were looking for the places that would do that or were you uh-huh. open to whatever the landscape suggested yeah it's tricky um because you you definitely have an idea in your mind's eye of what you're looking for the trick is then to be open to i mean it's compounded not just with aesthetics like i like that it's yeah. um okay well that's two and a half hours outside of our zone so in order to shoot in this location you're going to have to put up a crew of 200 people for three days and some things are untenable Um, we ended up it's very cobbled together the hardest the big challenge was um getting from bills to the wee boys and what all that was so Bill's house is in Calvary. That's fine. The um, the hardest part. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But they're like things are hours and weeks separate in terms of when and where they were shot. So the the wee boy getting to the wee boy house is miles and miles and miles from the house itself, um, and that was the hardest part to sort of factor in the big the greatest thing was the turn getting where you they bill hooks that quick turn and then when margaret's leaving at the end she goes the other way and climbs up that big thing and that was trevor uh smith our dp or our um, production designer found that um that location and that that turn was critical it's in the book it's in the anyway that was uh it was a miracle because we didn't have it yeah yeah Yeah. um so now you've mentioned houses a couple times Mm -hmm. um you 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 burned a house down yeah (laughs) i did um and so that must have gone pretty well you didn't say oh that didn't work um We'll come back tomorrow. Build, build me another house. Exactly. We'll come back tomorrow and do it again. Yeah. yeah. No, that was. Um, it, it was. Well, it's 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 interesting. It, it's a it, the. That sequence is, alluded to, in the book, but not in the book. Yeah. And, um. So that was sort of it, that was hard to figure all that out and to get Margaret we felt like Margaret needed to be part of the mm-hmm. action somehow at the end um but yeah burning the house it's he, George starts the fire in the book um and anyway when I it, I knew we were going to burn a house down and everyone was trying to convince me we could do it 
with computers and all that. And the deal I made, the the deal I made with everybody on who wanted to produce the movie or wanted to, you know, partner to make the movie was it had to be period, George dies, and we're burning a house down. And that, because the, it, it, it sort of goes back to your thing about um, what Kevin said about it being honest or truthful. And, and I felt like it, Margaret and George have such integrity as characters that you wanted the whole thing to be truthful. Yeah. It's sort of as as honest as they are, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, do you want to say something about why it's, it was so important to you that it be a, a period piece? That it could, because it's a fable. Um, I think mm -hmm. I want to go back to the fire for a second. Was the other big piece is I knew it was that house burning down isn't sort of there goes Blanche. You know the the dragon is vanquished. I knew that in order to feel like you, the loss of George, it, it, I always talked about the house that it was George's Viking funeral. Yeah. That it was word, you know, so we, there's the shot of the sparks going up and you just wanted, it's, you're sending George on his way yeah. as much as anything else. And if that were computers, it, it, it's, that, that was the issue was that the fire is tied to an emotional release. And if you, if it were fake, you'd, nothing else would work um, around that emotion. Right? Well, uh, we can come back to the period piece, but then that, I, 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 maybe we no. should talk a little bit about music. I thought the music in the no. movie was so effective. And in that scene, yeah, I, I thought the music was strangely, uh, it wasn't triumphant, but it, yeah. it was, it, there was a kind of a lift that came from, yes. the, mu from the music. It was just yeah. amazing. No, yeah. Well, you're. She's letting George. She's letting George go, <laughs> and he's sort of being carried by those sparks wherever he's going to go. Um, and it's M Michael Cicchino did the score. He's. You can't do better. I mean, that's Michael Cicchino. He's the greatest. So he he does it good. Yeah. 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 Um, but the period thing was critical to me because I didn't want cell phones. I didn't want computers. I don't want all those things. But that it's. I think you have the same, we probably have similar fascinations with the West in that it's the landscape of, of American mythology. And I, and this thing I always felt was not a fable, but it's something like that. It's a, a folk tale in a way and wanted it to be, you know, I always said for me, some days I would think about it like, oh, what you're seeing is Jimmy's, you're sort of seeing the visual version of Jimmy telling you this is, here's the story of how my grandparents saved me. That there was sort of a, a nostalgia baked into it by it being in period. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, from going from these lofty things to yeah. something quite different, yeah. uh, pork chops. Yeah. How, how many pork chops? Um, I, I, Adam and, and um, Colin, they were the young gentleman, uh, Connor um, and Adam were the boys who ate those. And they, I think we clocked out at 34. Um, and th there were spit buckets, but they didn't use them. But they, and those are big boys. Um, and they, they, God bless them. They kept going. It was sort of unbelievable, yeah. but they, yep. They ate every one of them and they did, the guys did like at the end, it, it was like, guys, we're not even, I can't even see you eating them. So don't eat them. Cause they, they, got, they looked a little green, but the guys did not the pork chops. Yeah. yeah they said the pork chops were actually good. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, for seven or eight. For the, right, exactly. For the first two hours, they were good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. Um, you know, one of one of my one of my uh, one of the ways I judge good movies is is by the um, I, I want to watch that part again. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah. So so I I watch or rewatch 
uh, uh, Vertigo or The Godfather mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Hannah and Her Sisters, and I say, oh, I, I just want to, I just want to see that part where, yeah. oh, oh no, no, I'm just going to stay for that scene when, when right. I, I just want to watch. A, and pretty soon you've watched the whole movie and you realize that this movie just has one good scene after another. So yeah. are are you thinking about, are you thinking about me, about viewers like me, when you are making a movie? Um, well, you, you just named three movies that are like in my top 10, for sure. Um, like I can't, if Hannah and her sister, I'm sunk because it's not a short movie no, <laughs> and I can't turn it off. Um, I, I think I'm always thinking about you know, I'm standing in for the audience. So it's, I'm, you know, it's what's, okay, I'm, I wanna see this movie for these reasons. And so this this scene will please me. Um, I don't know, I, 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 it was fun to do this one because there were s scenes that I love th that were, like it just there's a simple scene where they've le just dropped Jimmy off at the new apartment and left him and and they come home. Margaret's standing at the sink. George comes into the kitchen and finds Margaret standing at the sink with her back to him. And I, I mean, they hardly say anything. He says he's just in town. He's not far. He's just in town. And she says he's not here. And that's the scene. And it was, I knew my favorite when I wrote the script. Um, it was, I loved shooting it. I knew I was never going to see her face that she, he's, he, it's George's scene about being unable to reach his wife in her grief. And it was a big thing for me about his character and, and their predicament. Um, so I don't know. I like that scene. I can, yeah you know but it, it motivates me to make a movie like a small scene like that sure uh, do you uh, uh, do you know when you are maybe when it's in in shooting do you know when something special has happened um uh yeah to find special it's sort of like you know you you're it's all the whole sport of shooting yeah. is uh, yeah you know it, it's essentially lightning harvesting so you're out there with a jar just everybody watching trying to catch that moment mm -hmm. of lightning and you don't always get it you you know you you so you get one i don't know it's tricky you don't always get it yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, time is against you and all sorts of stuff. But um, when you, but you, you know, when it does happen, it's, it's awful great, awfully great. Um, yeah. yeah. But then sometimes you have to make it when you get home and you cut, cut two things together and make something special happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if, if we also talked at one point and you said about a, a, a particular scene that um, you 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 didn't have them go to the gas station because you didn't want to you didn't want to build another set. Uh -huh. And I realized that if I didn't know before, I realized that I was doing the right thing in writing fiction because if wow. I want them to go to the gas station, I just write he pulled into the gas station. Right, because it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. And when you're talking about those distances to to, to move. All those people. For oh, the, the distances, the extras, the a, a gas station is okay. So it's a period gas station. So they don't exist. So you're going to have to build it, or you're going to have to find something that you can camouflage to look like that. You have extras that you have to costume. You have picture vehicles that you have to bring in. You have a road that you're going to have to control. You have all that sort of stuff. No, it's like it's great. When I was doing um, an adaptation for something I wasn't going to direct the Guernsey movie, it was like, huh, exterior, night, 300 people. And you're like, I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna be there at three in the morning shooting that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, exterior, night, rain, have fun. I'll be in bed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I don't want to talk you out of movie making and make it sound no, like no, no, but it's really hard or something like that. Yeah, it, it, it's it's it, but that's you know, it's yeah. it's it's fun to figure out. Yeah. Um, so, does it ever happen the other way that you think hmm. you have something and then it just doesn't quite? Oh get there or something I, I don't yeah. know no it, it's, it's terrible but... it's terrible when when yeah and that's when you have to you know that's when you really lean on your brother jeff ford the editor to make something happen that didn't happen but yeah. uh, you know then there also it, it's the camera is a funny thing and it's it's why i the way i direct i almost never you know, they have this thing, it's called Video Village, where there's a feed from the camera and you can watch what it's gonna look like on the screen. And I like to stand next to the camera. I like to be as close as I can to the actors always um, to sort of see what they're doing because I can, it, it's the way I can feel whether something felt right. Um, and, you know, and then you later see it on film and sometimes, you know, the actor had this feeling and you had the feeling watching them. And it's like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. And you go to the camera and you're like, well, where, wait, where's the, remember the thing where it was so great? And it's like, it's just doesn't translate. It's really, it's, it is the magic of the camera. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and let me ask, since you mentioned camera, let me ask you about another, this is early in the, film when when uh, uh, James has been thrown from the horse yeah. and the 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 shot is from down low yes. it, it almost seems as if the camera is resting on the ground um, uh -huh. yeah I just really uh, uh, effective um, yeah it, it's great it's it, guy Godfrey and he the D D DP and he was operating the camera. Um, and it's a it's a pretty simple shot. It, if you go back and look at it, it's sort of nuts because um, it's almost all of one. I think it's maybe two shots. The it starts. You're looking down this creek, mm -hmm. and you see George in the far distance, and then he comes closer and closer on the horse, and you sort of pan along with him, and then you see the hat in uh, lying on the rocks which sort of lets you know something's wrong. And then as he's coming, he dismounts and he comes and he's to reveal the body of the sun yeah. um, was, no, we were down in a Creek bed and the camera is sort of like, if these are the rocks, the camera's like right here. Yeah. Yeah. And that um, Ryan Bruce played his son who was really good at playing dad. Yeah. Yeah. And Kevin's um, uh, 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 rear, view, rear view mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's funny. I had never, I've not had experience doing that kind of thing before. And um, no, it became a theme, didn't it? Yes, it did. Looking um, back, looking back. Yeah, looking, yeah. looking at the, looking back. And mm -hmm. uh, the, um, it's in you know the people we see in the rearview mirror are the grandson, mm -hmm. George in the car, and Peter, the Native yeah. American guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they make just great like like compositions in Don't the middle they? of all this motion yeah. and just yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're good. I, I really like this movie. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> it, it, nothing. It, it, let me tell you. I. I mean. I just. I go. I'm so happy to talk to you. I mean. I go back to having read Montana 1948 and being a huge fan, and then being in the Barnes and Noble bookstore in uh, the Grove and pulling Let Him Go from the shelf, and oh, Larry, I'll read this, and thinking I love this book, and then here we are. It's so yeah. thanks. I think I told. I think I warned you when we were, I think maybe when I gave you the script or something that at its best, at its absolute best, it's nothing more than fan fiction. <laughs> what I did. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, it's a movie. It's, it's just yeah, a great yeah. movie, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, reviews will be coming out. Yeah. Will you, will you read them? It, it, I, yeah. 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 
Okay. Do you? Uh, yeah. Do you, do you? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, a friend of mine once said years and years ago, a writer and a good writer, he said, um, sure, you read them and, and then you kind of have a dialogue mm -hmm. with, with yourself about yeah. the review and maybe you can learn something. I don't know if I ever have, but it's, yeah, good, it, it's sort of, the, the, you know, the, the good ones, you're like, oh, great. They, they got it. And then, you know, the bad, the ones that aren't nice, you're like, I know, I know, or, or they just didn't like, like you can't anyway. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. 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 It, it's also it's too late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Th th thanks for the scolding. I'll do better when right, I make exactly. this movie or write this book the next right. time. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and did you notice that once you had this movie made, that there was a worldwide pandemic and that that was certainly <laughs> have an influence and and so so yeah no i know it's a it's a bummer the um but i think it's a weird it's it's yeah it's a bummer i mean we got we were able to we screened the movie what I miss is seeing an, is seeing something like this with an audience. Yeah, and it, and it we had the opportunity to do it just once um, a year ago, almost a year ago, to the day um, in L.A. with a test audience, and it played really, really. It was just they were so the bloodlust. <laughs> they, they really they really liked it when when bill got shot and i they kind of cheered and i was this is, anyway it surprised me how um visceral the response was so it was good but um no i missed that um but i'm yeah. glad it's going out there yeah right yeah some something happens in a in a theater yeah 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 for sure um for sure but i'm hoping that we'll you know, people might be able to see this with their families before too long. And um, it's going to be a long, it'll be, I think we're, it's going to be a close winter for people. Yeah. And maybe yeah. they can watch this together. Um, on the other hand, the movie is made. It's not going away. So. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and we got lucky. We finished like final touches just the week before everything shut down here in New York. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, I, my heart breaks for movies that had to shut down in the middle or it's really rough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you get to stay mm -hmm. home now for uh, publicity and things like that, but otherwise you would be traveling? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. There's this, I would, it did like, it would make me so happy to do this with you in front of, with an audience that was sort of asking us questions live. Um, the yeah no i'm here that we did a press junket where you know it's all on the zoom um so yeah i mean there there's there are upsides and downsides yeah yeah, yeah. i would love to the thing i would really love is to, to just sort of be able to give leslie and diane and kevin hugs in person you know at this point but. uh I, we talked a little bit about this before um you know, my wife and I are big Leslie Manville fans. Well, yeah. for that matter, Kevin Costner and Diane Lane too. But, yeah. but Leslie Manville was a revelation. Yeah, yeah. She's she's great, and she she dove like wig first, <laughs> right <laughs> right into it. She she was great, and I I think the accent's really good. She just went right for it. It was. It was so much. It was so much fun to work with her. I, I, it was great. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I'd mentioned Barbara Stanwyck for the role, but I, I know. Right. No, I know. Forty Guns. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. No, she definitely. Then we were. You and I were talking the, about Mercedes McCambridge, or and, you know, and I sent you that glamour shot of her, and I loved that. It, 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 in the book, Blanche is described, I think she has long, straight black hair in the book. Mm -hmm. And Leslie had the idea for, she wanted big platinum. And I liked, I had not imagined it, 
but I liked the idea that it's her crown mm -hmm. in a way. And it also is this weird kind of, you know, Medusa curls. Like at one point, this one snake curl is sort of doing its business a lot. Um, so I, I liked that. Um, but in the book, and it was sort of the thing that I, I think sort of informed me about her was that she wears makeup. And um, I think her, she is described as something like she'd be more beautiful, but like something about a fuss of makeup is the way you described oh, okay. the way she'd done it. Um, and I, I love that. And so that's sort of, Leslie's is a little more cleaner, but I, I, but the idea of her being made up was, and, and that Blanche is, um, it, it sort of informed a lot, just that little description. In my mind, that she had put on makeup, that she's a performer and has sort of set this trap for them, that they're going to st step in and, uh, and this is her stage and she has a, she has a big monologue that she gives them and it's all very performative to send them a message that <laughs> hit the road. Yeah. 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 Uh, in this scene, I mentioned something that, that, that happened. Uh, probably the best review of a book I've ever had hmm. came from an, uh, uh, an eighth grade girl uh -huh. who had, read, had to read Montana 1948. And she said she liked it very much because she always knew what was going to happen, but it never did. Oh, and, huh. and in that scene at the table, yeah. when Diane and Leslie have this testy little exchange, yeah. and you think, oh, it's going to... And then they laugh. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take the tension away, but it just adds something... Um, yeah, it doesn't lighten the mood, but it no. In in some ways, it makes it a little worse. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. yeah, Blanche is well. It was one of the things I loved about Blanche in the book was she's funny, and she's unpredictable. Like you don't know what she's gonna do. She's laughing and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you wrote this. You directed it. Mm -hmm. You're listed as a producer. So yeah. that's a lot of stuff for a medium that's that's collaborative. Is it yeah. going to be your preferred way to work? I, I, I love doing it. I loved working with the producer, Paula Mazur. Um, the producers, Paula Mazur and Mitch Kaplan and Kimmy Armstrong Stein have a company, uh, Mazur Kaplan, that do these specific they really focus on book adaptations and i was lucky enough to work with them on the guernsey project and this came right they were saying once like we all had a great time doing that and they said if there's anything else you wanted like if there's a book and i said there's a book <laughs> and this is the one and so they came right on um no, we had, but it's, you know, I wanted to be a producer on it because it's, you know, we had a nice, a healthy budget, but it's not a huge movie. And so you want you going into it, knowing what I know about making movies at this budget level, yeah. you, the, the task is very producerial and, you know, do you, Anyway. Well, I'm uh, I'm going to thank you for uh, n not only for my book, but also thank you for for uh, you and and uh, Paula and Mitchell for the being such good friends to writers and looking at books for material for, uh, yeah. for films. And also, I I love good movies, so uh, I'm I'm really grateful for for this. <laughs> That's great. That's great. As well, yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're big readers. So it's, it's good, it's good. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Okay. Yeah. I think we're wrapping up here and yeah. I, so uh, thank you again. It was just great I, talking to you. Larry, yeah. thank you, <laughs> my brother. We're, uh, let's do it again sometime. Let's. Yeah, okay, good. All right.
Thanks, everybody.